Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be talking about do engineers over design their stuff? It's really common for contractors or clients to always criticise destructive engineers and if you go to enough meetings or you go to site enough you always probably hear it that are oh, the engineers, you know, they always over design their stuff, you know, there's loads of redundancy and it's really easy for them to say this kind of thing because it's not their name or it's not their neck on a line if something goes wrong. It's not their liability, you know, it's the engineer's design, it's their liability. It's got nothing to do with the contractor or the, or the client in terms of design responsibility or design liability. So it's really easy for them to, you know, make a comment like that when there's no risk associated with them trying to, you know, design stuff to the nth degree. So do engineers over design? To a certain extent, yes, but I'm just gonna clarify this. When engineers design something, we have something called utilization or unity. And that can normally be described as unity being at one or 100%. A design is either pass or fail. So if it's above one or above 100%, that's a fail. If it's less than one, then it's a pass. How much under pass doesn't really matter. That design works. However, anything above one or 100% means that design has technically failed. And I also want to point out that just because a design is technically failed in design doesn't mean that it's going to fall down. However, no designer in their right mind would ever put out a design which has technically failed. So something which is over designed would technically be anything under one. However, it is completely impractical and inefficient to des design something which is bang on one or 100%. If I'm designing something at detailed design stage, I'm probably aiming for my designs to be at around 85 to 95% because I'm also trying to balance the amount of time I'm putting into the design and also making sure that I've got a little bit of redundancy that if something changes on site or something happens, I've still got about say five to 15% where I can swing the design to make sure that it still passes without having to change any reinforcement or change the size, the section size of the structure. Does that make me a bad designer for designing say my structure to around 85% utilization. Personally, I don't think so because I've got a contingency which I need to make sure I'm hitting because I've designed enough projects where I understand that things can go wrong, things can change, the client can change their mind. I am fully aware that the redundancy could be wasted, but I've also got to look at it in the perspective of a business. I'm trying to make money as well I could spend forever designing something to 100% utilization and be a perfect design. But that's gonna eat so much fee that I'd be like losing money and that would not be a profitable business. And at the end of the day, if a business isn't profitable, you're not gonna be able to do future projects. So it's a balance act between the two. There's also the argument of when you put a design out at different stages, I would be designing stuff to different utilization. So for example, if I was designing something at scheme stage, so very, very early stage within the project, you know, you're throwing out ideas out there. I'd be putting out designs which were probably around 50 to 60% utilized. Because again, I understand that things change, things get updated, a client can change their mind. There are loads and loads of risks which have probably been identified which aren't going to be resolved immediately. That 50-60% design is going to allow for these design changes, these risks. I know engineers who design stuff at 90% utilization or even higher at scheme stage and in my opinion that is suicide because so many things can change and the client is never going to remember when you save them money, but they will always remember when you cost them more money. And what clients, what contractors hate the most is when you change, say, a section size so that it ends up costing them more money. If a contractor has bid for a project or tendered for a project, 
and they've locked in their price. The last thing that they want is for you to change the beam size so that it's a heavier weight or it's a bigger size and that's going to cost them more money. They're going to remember you for that, but they'll never remember the times when you saved them money. So I always err on a side of caution when I design stuff, especially at the early stage when a lot of things aren't fixed. Just give yourself a lot of leeway for things to get changed. Again, personally, designing stuff at 50% utilization at scheme stage does not make me a bad engineer. Designing stuff at 50% utilization at detail design stage, just before it goes out for construction, that probably makes you a bad engineer because you're being overly conservative and you're, you know, you're not spending an adequate enough time with the design to give your client a good quality product or good quality service. There have been plenty of times when I've over-engineered stuff, but that's to account for uncertainty. Very bespoke designs probably deserves uh, a decent amount of conservatism because there are probably some things which you probably don't fully understand. And you've also got to balance that with the amount of time you're spending on a project because you're going to burn a lot of money doing a lot, a lot of research. And sometimes that's all right. Sometimes spending a lot of time to get something at about 90% utilization is absolutely fine. But again, like I've mentioned before, this is a bit of a balancing act. And in some cases, there are times where you're gonna be burning more fee than you can actually afford. But this could be, you know, build down to training. So that, okay, this project, you're gonna lose a bit of money to do this training. But when it happens again on the next project, you're probably, or hopefully, you're gonna be earning money. You're gonna be spending less time on it because you've already learned from your previous training, essentially, training on the job. I mentioned right at the start that contractors or clients will often have a little dig at uh, engineers especially of for over designing your structures and just as a little bonus thing for the end of this video a good way to sort of overcome this or kind of rebuke them is just be really really confident in your design if you start talking some technical spiel they have no idea what you're on about and as long as you're confident in the way that you're delivering this to them they're gonna just like back off because they have no idea really what is involved within you know, the design of structures. So as long as you're confident, back your design, back whatever you say with some technical jargon, they're gonna step away and they'll probably respect you for it because you're gonna show them that you're not a pushover. So just to finish up this video, yes, engineers do over design, but it's important to realize at what stage of design can you be a little bit more conservative and when you need to refine your design, that's when you can bump up the utilization to get your design to a comfortable level. In my case, it's around 85, 90%, that, that kind of level. That's what I'm comfortable with. I haven't really had any problems, you know, going that far, 90% utilization gives me a little bit of comfort. For me, designing stuff to 90% and allowing for a 10% buffer for changes or errors has worked pretty well for me. And don't get me wrong, sometimes the change or the error means that that 10% isn't enough. And I have to go back, revisit the design completely, and sometimes I've had to change the size, generally to make it bigger or put more, more reinforcement in to make the design work. And it happens, I get it, but for me, Having that 10% buffer has really limited the amount of times that can happen. And honestly, sometimes it's not even my fault that the change occurs, but no one wants to see the structure get more costly. They want to minimize the design. And the best way to do that is to have this little buffer, in my experience anyway. Some other engineers may have other experiences, but generally, this is what has worked well for me when I've been designing stuff. So recapping, when I design concept stage, I'm probably aiming for about 50-60% utilization. Then you've got the next design stage, so Ruby stage 3. And I'll probably bump up the utilization a bit further so that when your project or when your drawings, your design goes out for tender, the cost the contractor is going to price on it is going to be pretty well fixed. And then once you get to Ruby stage 4, that's when you can really put the final design in 
and that's when you can push the design up to about the 80-90% utilisation so that the contractor has cost certainty but you've still left yourself a little bit of a buffer for any changes that might occur. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers!